Come sit by my me. What have we here? There you go. Come and say hello to BookTube. Hello, BookTube. It's Louise, the Big Head Bookworm. Lovely to see you. Hope you are well. Oh, he is coming over. Um, it's Friday Reads. It's Friday Reads. It's Friday Reads. Don't sit on the books. It's Friday Reads. It's an unusual addition to Friday Reads. So here I am. I'm sat in my bedroom with various cats and it is Friday the 28th of September and I am here with Friday Reads. It's Friday Reads. Let's talk books. Let's talk books. So first of all, I am here with two cats. I've got one cat down here who is just leaving the room. See you then. That was Sally. Um, so Sally has sus had suspected cystitis. Um, so she ended up at the vets on Wednesday. And then I've been trying to get a urine sample from her, which is not, as I suggested on Instagram, trying to get her to pee in a bottle. That's not going to happen. It was, we've got some special kitty litter that she's to pee in and it's non-absorbent. And then I was to siphon off a bit. However... She's flatly refusing to pee in there and he's been, he keeps sneaking out and peeing outside, but has stopped. Oh, oh, it's all right. It's all right. But has stopped her, the, the actions as though she's not um, got cystitis. And then that sad creature, who's now just trying to clean himself, is Indy. So if you watched my yarn chat of a couple of weeks ago, you know that I pointed out Indy's forehead and I said he's got a uh, cut or something on his forehead and it might might be an abscess. Well, it was an abscess and it went huge at the weekend. He was a uni cat at one point. He had a horn. Um, and then it exploded on Sunday, which wasn't good. Um, and I was out and so I was greeted with, hello, did you have a nice weekend? The cat's head's exploded um, and he won't let me clean it. So Indy was walking with all manner of fluid on his forehead. So we cleaned that up because he'll let me pick it up, but he wouldn't let anybody else touch him. So I, we cleaned it um, and then I took him to the vets and there was a lot more. I won't go into details, but let's say I ended up washing my hands for about half an hour afterwards because I had to hold him as she was and it went everywhere. Oh, it went everywhere. Um, Benedict was in the room as well. And he, he went, oh, I think I'm going to have to sit down because <laughs> it was quite, quite a sight, actually. So then I was left with the saddest cat in the entire world. So he is just the saddest cat. So he's it's all cleaned up. It's looking like it's healing beautifully, but because he is want will want to do it with his paw and open it back up again, he's having to wear a collar. Let me bring him over. Are you ready? Come on. So this is Indy. Oh look! It's the saddest cat in the world. He is our little. There he is. But his poorly forehead. Oh, he is the saddest cat in the world, and he's like a little angle poise light. So he's like the most affectionate angle poise you can ever imagine. He sits behind me and puts his cone on my head <laughs> and bangs it if I won't pay him attention. He just bangs me with the cone. Like, oh god. Um, but he also wants to nuzzle. He wants to nuzzle his head against you. So. He yeah, he's very miserable because he's not allowed out. He's got to stay in because he would hit it, basically, and, and try and take it off. I was So he had it on the whole of Monday, and then I was woken up at 6 o'clock on Tuesday morning with a very happy Indy because he'd managed to get it off. And then, I put, of course, I put it back on. And then he became the saddest cat in the world and has been known to sit with a cone pressed against the wall in unhappiness. Oh, it's been, a, it's been a trying week. We've had the exhaust fall um, off the back of one of car, one of the cars. The husband, but it didn't completely fall off. So the husband had to drive the car for quite some time with the exhaust off because he was on the motorway. Oh, let's not just go there. So he had that. And then I phoned up the pest control people this afternoon. For, to come this afternoon because we've got a wasp nest at the back of the house and the wasps have started to come in Benedict's bedroom. Hooray! This week is just a week that keeps on giving. I'm hoping 
that we have covered all the bases now and it's just going to be easy. <laughs> We've had anything that could go slightly funny has gone slightly funny this week. But luckily we're all hale and hearty, so that's okay. And I have been wishing on for nearly five minutes and I haven't started talking about books. Thank you very much for everybody that commented on my last week's Friday reads. I have read all the comments and um, it is lovely to hear from you. Thank you for the people that have been giving me book suggestions, or books to read um, or books to try on audio books. That's been lovely. Um, what else? Somebody said on one of my videos because I said that the husband is a feminist, said, how, I'm confused, how can he be a feminist? And I just wanted to say here now, I can completely understand that because feminist is, is often seen as we have to be female to be a feminist. No, feminist just means in believing equality for women. So equal pay, equal right under the law, equal opportunities. It's about not uh, about equality, which is we haven't yet um, got. So it's about gender not being the defining aspect of you when it comes to things in the law and in society and um, lack of discrimination towards women which we still experience in, in society especially in equal pay for example so that's why the, the husband is a feminist because he is a firm believer in equality between the genders and we are raising our son to be a feminist as well so benedict believes in that as well he doesn't understand why he wouldn't which is which is kind of what I'm I'm like yeah exactly why would why would it be a problem so that's that's where that come from so that's why I said that the husband is a feminist sad cat is now over there so let's talk about the books let's talk about the books so I uh, I don't think I'd started this no I went away for the weekend yes I did I had a lovely weekend it was when I came back that everything went a bit pear shape. It was very long. I was so tired. I did nothing. I finished Written in Blood, the audiobook I had by Diane Fanning. And that was really good because it was one I'd heard before. So I could have it on and kind of half listen to it. And it was kind of comfort listening to it rather than having to concentrate listening. And that's probably exactly what I needed. So I finished that on Saturday. I then listened to a couple of podcasts. I didn't read anything. I wasn't back until four o'clock, five o'clock Sunday morning. And then I had about four hours sleep and then I went back. And so it's all been, it was all very long and, and, and utterly brilliant. And I spent the weekend with some utterly fabulous people who I love with all my heart. So that was wonderful however that meant monday i was absolutely shattered as well as much as everything else that goes on it's about being with people and and that is exhausting for me it is it doesn't energize me it exhausts me in a wonderful way but it does do that so i didn't read anything on monday i was listening to podcasts and so i picked this up on tuesday and i read about 50 pages and then got absolutely hooked and you know when you get at, and it was just brilliant and I think it was exactly what I needed not serious not hard to read I would say this is the Iron Worm Affair by Lilith St. Crow and this is my first Lilith St. Crow that I've ever read um I would say if you are somebody that likes everything explained to you and you like to know from the beginning you know, you like your world building to be done and then the plot. You like everything to be explained. This is not going to be your kind of book. It is very much thrown in from the deep end. Nothing's explained. You pick it up as you go along. And I was fine about that. I initially checked that has she introduced this world before? Because there was no explanations for anything. But actually she hadn't. And you did actually work everything out. It made sense. By a good third of the way in the book, everything made sense. And I couldn't put it down. Couldn't put it down. Victorian era, steampunk, paranormal, alternative universe, um, heavily Sherlock Holmes inspired, I would say. That was obviously a real influence in that. Um, feisty, powerful, passionate main character who is Miss Emma Bannon, Banyan, and I loved her. I just loved her. And then that is Archibald Clare. Um, 
really good. Really, 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 really good. I um, I think it's just what I needed. It was an antidote to everything else that was going on. And I had that thing where I, like even a moment's, a moment that I had um, to read, I'd be picking up the book. I carried the book everywhere I went. <laughs> In the vets. There I was reading half paragraph before we got me and Miss Sally got called in, and um, yes, so I loved it. I read it. I started it on the Tuesday and I finished it on Wednesday. I think because I just couldn't put it down. It was just really good. I really enjoyed it, and I have ordered the second one. And I was saying to myself, "Do not order any more books. Do not order any more books." And I have ordered the second one because. Um, I'm hoping it was as good and as compelling as this first one. But I really enjoyed it. It really invigorated me and made me want to read. And that's what I needed. That's what I wanted. I wanted to be invigorated and I wanted to read. And thank you very much. Well done, that Lilith. Lilith. Um, so I am now reading. And I will show you. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Bear with one moment. You've gone a bit dark there. Gone a bit dark. Go to, it's on my Kindle and it is, go to cover. Bum, 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 bum. The Red Magician by Lisa Goldstein. So this is the September read of the Lady, Bolt, Lady Vaults book club run by Elizabeth from Books and Pieces. Um, it is not a long book. Let's say I'm about there. I don't think I'm, I think I'm further in than that. Yeah, it's not a long book. As far as I can see, it's got, I'm probably going to finish it today. I, I started it a little bit last night and then I pretty much read it this morning um, while I was getting, you know, before I got up and then when I was getting read and I'm already 37% the way through it and I can read quickly but I think that was only like 60 70 pages so I think it is going to be a book that I should be able to finish today it is I don't know if it's young adult at the moment I would say it has a flavor of young adult it is a paranormal fantasy when well, a fantasy yeah, fantasy, YA fantasy, set in Hungary in the late 1930s. It's apparently about the Holocaust, although we haven't got there yet, but you can feel it's coming. Um, somebody said to I read somewhere it was called a ho Holocaust fantasy, which made me do that a little bit. But it, obviously it's looking about the impact of that. Um it is written in the form of a fable from the perspective at the moment of a 13 year old girl. I'm not going to say much more than that. I find it a very easy read. I'm not in totally engaged in it at the moment. And considering I'm like over a third of the way through, you'd have thought I would be. But it's enough that I want to keep on reading to see what happens. Um, and I'm going to be interested to see what everybody else says. I'm not going to give a full review on here because if you're part of the uh, Lady, Bolt, Lady Vaults book club, apparently there is a Goodreads group. And so I think I will go in there and I will write my review or any thoughts that I have of it in there rather than... I may briefly mention it here, but I won't go on about it. So, so yeah, so that's what I'm reading at the moment. I haven't got a book in mind after that because I thought that was going. I thought it was a larger book, and I thought it was going to take me a bit longer. So, at the moment, that's what I'm I'm reading, but I don't know what I'm going to read next. And listening, I am listening to the Crudest Month by Louise Penny, which is the third of the Inspector Gamache stories that I was talking about and it is set in three pines somebody else said yes it is it's set in three pines the fourth one isn't set in um three pines but apparently they're reading the fifth so it's one of those stories one of those kind of detective series I think it's a good idea to read in in order um I would say and I'm really enjoying it and if you like kind of cozy oh, what kind of cozy thrillers cozy crime I just, it's really good. I mean, it's very character driven, 
rather than the crime. Very much that way. So I am on chapter 9 of 45 and we haven't had a death or anything like that. <laughs> it is very much talking about the characters. But I am enjoying it. I just find it, I find them lovely to listen to. And there we go. That's it. There we go. Oh, and, 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 guess what I was watching last night? Guess what I was watching last night? Go on, go on, go on. Guess what I was watching? You're absolutely right. I was watching A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness on our televisions. So the first two are out. First two episodes are out. And I, I watched one and then the majority of the second. And I'm watching it with her husband. Otherwise, I would have watched it earlier. But I'm watching it with her husband. And then he got very tired. And so we went to bed. And I was like, oh. So we're going to watch the last 15 minutes of the second episode might wait until the third episode comes out and then we'll catch up and, and watch on because once you start watching it so yes i'll have to have a think about the, what i think about it i was i mean he was hooked the husband was hooked and he doesn't know anything he hadn't hasn't read any of it he didn't know anything all he knew is that i really wanted to watch it and it's obviously about witches so he was yeah but i must admit i must admit i am kind of hooked but the funny thing is they're doing it slightly not out of order but of course the way that they've they've shot it they're not doing it in the same way as the book and they're putting scenes here and there and understandably um although they are following are they following the sequence yeah i think they are following the sequence but it's not it's a little bit different and so it it's so hard when you're watching it not to go, oh, that scene's not there. Oh, no, they don't have that conversation to later. Oh, why has that happened? And this guy, I don't remember that happening. There was this whole bit in Italy. I don't remember that. Um, not to say it wasn't very good. And if you've watched it, Trevor Eve, my word, my word. I was like, hello, handsome. A bit craggy, but hello, handsome. Yeah. Matthew Good, stamp of approval. Yes. Yes, done. Um, the lady that's playing Diana. Not bad, not bad. I think the problem is when you have somebody, a character like that, and you've really got them in your head. Do you know what I mean? You've got them in your head, and you've got this very kind of firm idea of what you think they're going to look like, and then they put somebody else up there, and you're like, oh, well, she's not tall enough, or she's too tall, or her hair is not wild enough. It's quite wild, but it's not wild enough. Um, some other characters are really good. Really good. Yeah. But I have to say, it's far better than I expected it to be, because I had just thought it was going to be like, oh, I'm going to be watching it going... But no, it's far better than I thought it was. And Matthew Good, stamp of approval. Trevor Eve, hello. <laughs> but I don't know what character he's playing. I'm like, I don't remember you from the book, but maybe it's because I haven't read the book recently. I think I would have remembered. They're fascinating anyway. Uh, so yeah so that was it so that's good so I can't actually I think the third episode might be on today in which case could be over the weekend although we've got strictly so there we go so that's it that's the end of my ramblings for today have I rambled on far too long I have rambled on far too long sorry I rambled on far too long I thought oh, it's gonna be 10 minutes maximum but it's not it's going a lot longer anyway I've got to go out now and then I've got to get back because the pest control chap will be coming or lady will be coming to look at the wasp situation in our back garden because we've been really fine about them up until now but then they started to come into ben, <laughs> benedict's room yeah no can't have that gonna have to go i'm afraid so yeah so that's the end of that so i hope you are very well i look forward to reading all your comments and having a chat um if you fancy coming over to instagram i'm over there and you get to see things like pictures of sad cats <laughs> and happy cats but Sad cats, like that one back there. Um, yes, and so there we go. I look forward to seeing you again soon, and I hope... Oh, yes, I'm going to be recording another video over this weekend, which will be going up on Monday, which is the 1st of October. So there we go. So this has been Lovely Booktube. Look forward to seeing you again.